Hello everyone, my name is Andrew Stibberts, CCSI, CCMP, here with Sunset Learning Institute, and today we're talking about the importance of physical network maintenance. A uh, question I occasionally get from my students, they talk about network management, talk about network diagrams and the physical world of our networks and network maintenance, and sometimes they ask about the importance of why do we care? Why do we spend so much time looking at cabling? Why do we spend so much time looking at the physical diagrams? Now this question doesn't come up a lot because as some of you might have already, you know, kind of chuckling to yourselves already, we've all seen some examples of poor cabling and poor maintenance on our networks. Uh, but occasionally we get that question. So that's what we're going through right now is we're talking about why we do uh, what we do. So first off in the world of definitions, you know, what is cabling? So first off, you know, what are network cables? We got the, our, our Ethernet cables, the UTP, the Cat4, the Cat5 cabling. We have our fiber connections, or serial connections. When we talk about cabling, we're talking about dealing with the actual physical wires. We're not really talking about, you know, manipulating the traffic or the logical topology. We're just dealing with the actual cables, the actual wires running through the floor, running through the ceiling, the walls, and how we handle those. So cabling is going to be the process of actually providing some sort of organization, actually providing some sort of structure, not just plugging it in. Because if you just plug everything in without any sort of structure, without any pattern, we're going to have some pretty interesting situations. The, the term you kind of occasionally hear about this is the, a rat's nest, where everything is all jumbled together. And one of the keys here is it works. Okay, don't get me wrong, everything's plugged in, everything has connectivity, but it's when something needs to change, it's when something uh, has a problem, you need to do some troubleshooting, that's when this becomes a problem. So it's kind of protecting ourselves, uh, kind of planning for that situation when something needs to be changed, when something needs to be troubleshot, that's what we're looking for right now. Because if we didn't ever have those situations, it wouldn't matter. But in the world of networks, something always goes wrong. When we're dealing with electronics. There will be a problem eventually. You will have to go fix something. And so if you have to deal with something like this as your network, it's a little harder to figure out exactly which cable you need to troubleshoot, exactly which port that cable runs to. And you spend a lot of time tracing cables. It's a lot of wasted time. We start to see situations like this. And one of the things we'll, you'll, you'll hear is it's just easier to unplug everything and start from scratch. And so what we're going to do is we'll take a little extra time, we'll take a couple extra hours, a couple extra days, and when we go implement a new switch, when we implement a new router, just any new device, we take extra time to lay the cables out in a logical and organized method so that we know exactly where they're going. The idea here is we're also going to provide documentation. Okay, and that's where we'll talk about that in a second. So here's some examples of a well laid out, a well cabled or good cable, proper cabling, and it's all the same, uh, network. And so you can see here we've got cable trays, we've got uh, zip ties and Velcro bundling the cables together. If you had to go troubleshoot something on that network, go troubleshoot something on that rack, you would know exactly where to go because you could follow that cable in a straight line if you had to trace the cable. Hopefully in a network like this, uh, with this well laid out, you would also have documentation of which cables run to which devices. Here we have another example of cabling. We see the zip ties running to the different bundles. And so we see this is a much easier network to troubleshoot. Okay, everything's still plugged in. That hasn't changed between what we had before and what we're seeing here. Everything still works, but it's for those moments, for those troubleshooting moments, for those scalability moments, this is a lot easier to work with. This is another great example. I wanted to point this one out, where if you look at the actual cables themselves, they, the cables have been labeled for where they're going. That's going to be another big aspect of cabling. It's not just the physical bundling of all of our cables and putting the physical cable you know, in the correct tray, but also doing labeling of the cable and labeling of the interface so that when we go to reference our documentation, we don't actually have to go to the wire. We don't actually have to go to the device. Our documentation should be so, so thorough that we should be able to reference the documentation 
and not ever have to walk into the data center. As long as something doesn't need to be physically moved. Something needs to be physically moved, sure, you're going to have to touch the cable anyway. So we talk about the, the lack of cable management, the lack of cabling or improper cabling. When it comes to troubleshooting, it comes to scalability, it's just wasted time. You have to get up there, you have to trace the cable, you have to actually put your hands on it, and you can't just plan, you can't just design for the change and then go implement it. You spend more time fussing with your current network, almost as much time fussing with your current network, than as you do actually implementing the new router, implementing the new hardware. And that kind of goes to the scalability issue. You have a situation, you have a rat's nest like we saw earlier. If you have to add new hardware, that's the point where you just look you look at your existing wiring and you say, I don't want to touch that. I don't want to unplug anything because I'm afraid of you know what it may or may not be plugged into. You don't exactly know. And then, of course, if nothing's documented, nothing's labeled, it comes time for changes, you might think you're working on the correct interface, but if you, you're, and you're tracing that bunch and you accidentally trace the wrong cable, nothing's labeled, you might change an interface, put, move a wire, and you move the wrong one. And so all of those are problems that uh, can arise from just lack of documentation, lack of organization. So what do we do? We're going to do? We're going to implement zip ties and Velcro. We're going to have uh, our label makers for uh, the ends of the cables, for the physical interfaces that they plug into. Uh, we have the cable management. We have, like I said, the trays, the racks. We do zip ties and Velcro inside those. All of these are wonderful tools for just taking the physical wires and laying them out in a logical method, an organized method, so we don't waste time later. And now here, the other place we can come and uh, do some... Uh, kind of documentation, kind of configuration, is physically we can label the, the wire, physically we can label the interface it plugs into, but then inside the network device itself, kind of going into the documentation, is we can create those logical uh, labels, you know, assign on the interface, assign on the protocol, we can tell it which interface, uh, out of that interface, what neighbor you should find, out of that interface, what cable should be plugged in there. So we have both our physical and our logical documentation, our physical and logical labeling. Okay, the idea here is that everything we're doing should be documented to the degree that the person who comes after you, the next network engineer, your fellow network engineer, they should never have to go walk out into the data center to figure out where does that cable run. They should be able to reference your documentation and see exactly what your network looks like physically. So that's those are the things we can implement. We can implement, like I said, the, the label makers and do uh, fulfill our documentation. Documentation is kind of a fun one because it never ends. You will never be done with it as long as the network's still running. As long as there is ever a change, your documentation must update. But the idea here is that we're going to do it to a degree so that when it does come time for a change, when it does come time that we have to go troubleshoot an interface we know exactly where that cable is going, to which interface, to which router, there, and we don't have to go trace the actual cable and just waste time. So hopefully this has been helpful for you. Uh, we talk about this a lot in the, some of the CCNA uh, level courses. Um, but like I said, this question doesn't come up a lot because most people have seen rat's nest before and they know that, well, we want to avoid something like that. But occasionally we get that question, so that's what we're answering here. Hope you all have a wonderful day, and I hope this has been helpful.